We are sitting here in Concord Township's uh, fire station number one for our Springside um, chat. Uh, not fireside, since we have a fire truck behind us. Um, we have our, our. Doesn't that make it a fire truck side chat? It'd be yeah, a fire side truck side. Say <laughs> so that three times yes. real fast. We do have a special guest with us, and we have our fire chief, so it's very fireish. <laughs> Um, Hot topic. As, as you know, we have been discussing uh, our fire stations for some time now. We've been going through uh, several studies over the last 10 or 12 years, uh, which has brought us here today where uh, we are now sitting inside our fire station number one uh, that it appears that needs to be updated uh, significantly. And so we're going to be talking to our fire chief a little bit about what's going on in the fire department, uh, some of our history and uh, what he has uh, uh, in store for plans for the new fire station. Well, thank you all very much. I appreciate the time to uh, address the township and, and on this important topic. Behind us is 1375. This is a new rescue pumper that we just took delivery of. Uh, we hope to have this in service uh, in time for our April 13th push-in ceremony that everybody's welcome to. Uh, that'll be at 1130 right here in front of fire station number one and we'll be going right into uh, the op an open house for the fire stations um, Just to give you a little bit of background Concord fire department was established in 1948 and originally uh, re The firefighters responded out of the basement of town hall uh, with one truck specifically designated for grass fires uh, in, on October 16th of 1966, both this station and Station 2 at Prouty and 84 were dedicated uh, and they are the stations that exist today. Uh, there's been several updates and remodels of both facilities throughout the years. Um, in uh, uh, 1966, there was approximately 25 firefighters. Uh, today we have over 50. Uh, which includes three administrative staff, three fire prevention officers, uh, 15 full-time firefighters, and about 30 part-time firefighters taking up the same amount of space. Uh, one of our biggest challenges is with vehicle storage. It may not come as a surprise to you that it's important for us to be able to respond to you in a timely manner. So it doesn't help us when our response vehicles are not located in this space uh, immediately adjacent to where the firefighters work and live. Uh, we currently have one ambulance that must be stored back in the service garage uh, that takes several minutes to deploy should it be needed. Uh, we have a, an off-road vehicle that's start, stored in the red barn across the street from fire station one. And both of our command trucks have to be stored outside in all, all year round. Uh, so the, all that <clears throat> all that contributes to a, a delay in our response, and that's something that these new facilities will help address. When we look at our facilities, as mentioned, we had the Ohio Fire Chiefs uh, Association do an independent study of our facilities uh, to determine feasibility as well as uh, location. We have two stations: Station One, Station Two at uh, 84 in Johnny Cape area and then uh, we also have a fire prevention office which is immediately adjacent to station 2. Uh, all these facilities are seeing an increase in, in maintenance costs. The difficulty with our fire prevention bureau is that it should be located with the fire department administration and with close access to our zoning department so that it makes it more convenient for people wanting to come to file plans with the Bureau as well as with zoning. Uh, we have an increased staffing uh, to, to respond to today's call volume. <clears throat> Last year we responded to over 2,500 calls for assistance and we have tight spaces. Uh, we're experiencing some, some roof leaks uh, inefficient HVAC systems that don't allow for fresh air circulation in either either space. Um, one of the biggest issues that we're, we're dealing with is in terms of uh, firefighter safety and health. So in this space that we're in right one, now... Probably one of the most significant and, and, that's, and that's 
not only the way that the fire station set up, but also because you, you have these stairs that you have to come down. Correct. And, and these uh, these engines are, are below the uh, the living quarters. But additionally, um, where we store the gear, the uh, the gear that is contaminated and in close relations to um, you know the daily work of the firefighter here correct absolutely so the, a new facility would address uh, a specific designated storage area for uh, gear uh, first it'll go into a uh, decontamination process after they return from a fire then there's a decontamination process for the firefighter as well um, with showers r located right off of the base base so that they can decontaminate themselves before they go into the living areas of the firehouse. Um, so that's, that's a, a big impact. The, only o the other thing that that does for us is it extends the life of the firefighter gear. Mm -hmm. Firefighter gear ex only lasts 10 years. Well, every time it's washed, every time it's exposed to sunlight, and every time it's put in a, an environment such as with diesel exhaust, that reduces that useful useful life of that gear. So we want to be good stewards of the money, but it's necessary equipment that we want to preserve its life. Um, the other concern that we have is this, neither fire station has a fire alarm system. There's no suppression system. Well, when a disaster strikes, you expect that the fire department to be sustainable through that disaster. Um, and if we're directly impacted, we can't be of assistance. So it's important that we have a, a fully functional alarm system and suppression system, uh, as well as security. Security is a big issue. Um, as I mentioned um, earlier today, um, you know, we're looking at getting ballistic vests for our firefighters, and this is, uh, our, our facilities are, are just as important to secure as well. Um, a lot of our documents are currently stored off site in an unprotected building. Um, that's got quite a bit of, I mean, it's, it's a barn for, for lack of a better term of storage. So that's a, that's a concern for us as well as there's no space for spare fire hose or fire, fire gear or firefighting tools, stuff like that, that takes up space. But we are happy. The firefighters here do a very, very good job at taking care of the space that we do have. And if we're, if we're blessed with a new, a new facility, we'll have that, we'll have that same attitude. Um, a lot of the programs that the fire department offers, including child safety seat inspections and installations, first aid and CPR trainings, smoke alarm programs, fire education, residential lockbox programs, uh, home inspections, all of these programs are offered to the community at, at little or no cost, but they all take up space. Um, so we need to make sure that we can accommodate those programs in the future. Uh, right now we ha hold a lot of our programs off-site because we don't have a safe place for, to hold them on, in the fire station. Um, so we have to take advantage of some other opportunities for, for holding those courses. Um, Chief, oh, go ahead. Chief uh, the, for residents that want to come and look at the existing facilities, uh, do you suggest they make a, an appointment with you or they call a certain person to make an appointment to take a look at the facilities as they stand now? Absolutely. We welcome anybody to come in and take a look at our facilities. Um, just call the fire, call fire station number one at 354-7504 uh, and we'll be happy to accommodate them. Uh, and I think it's important that this is why there will be the open house on April 13th. Mm -hmm. Um, to give the public an opportunity to come in, review the facilities as they currently <coughs> exist, um, both uh, from a uh, operational standpoint and, you know, frankly, from an inadequacy standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, from the perspective of the, of the trustees and the fire chief, um, this process that we've been engaged in for a number of years now in terms of doing an analysis on response times, facility locations, acquiring property for facility expansion, and now uh, retaining an architect to design new facilities. If we're going to ask the public to join us in this investment, and, and make no mistake, this is an investment, um, a 70 to 75 year investment for Concord Township, um, in terms of emergency services and the services that are provided to our mm -hmm. residents. 
if we're going to ask residents to join us um, in that commitment, we want folks to be able to come here and see what it's all about, to see firsthand um, why it's important, to understand why it's important not only from a safety standpoint for our, um, our firefighters, but also how it's advantageous for our residents, be it from response times, insurance rates, um, equipment maintenance. There's a lot of factors that go into this and why it's critical. Um, Concord Township is becoming a very mature community. Um, the 2020 census you know, estimates are that we'll be around 20,000 residents and um, that makes us actually the largest township um, in the seven county area here in Northeast Ohio and um, making sure that we have adequate facilities and, and properly um, executed services is very important to this board and so we really do encourage folks to ask questions inquire with us inquire with the chief mm -hmm. come out on April 13th take a look at the, the facilities and um, you know join us in this process yeah, we've had uh, good support from the community for the fire department for years and years, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of new residents who have never been here, and I really encourage them to come and take a look. Absolutely, and there's even a lot of residents that uh, don't realize that they live in the Concord Township Response District. A lot of times we'll show up at a house and they'll think, wow, Mentor's really busy if Concord's coming, when in reality it's it's Concord that should be coming to their, their residents. But their zip codes. Right, yeah, get uh, the zip codes, screw that up. Screw up, yeah. Um, but it, it, since 1948, so our emergency services have, has expanded. So back when they started, it was just grass fires that they responded That's to. True. Now since then, we respond to structure fires, EMS calls, car, uh, car crashes, vehicle crashes, confined space crash, uh, rescues, collapses. Um, fishermen, rope. fishermen stranded fishermen, out fishermen. in the middle of a, of a yep. river. We do it all. We do a lot of different things. Um, but when I became chief in 2016, I realized right away that I wasn't educated on this process. So I began immediately going to conferences, talking to other fire chiefs and municipalities that have, in Ohio and throughout the country that have gone through it to get some guidance on the best way to approach this so that we're making an educated decision uh, moving forward. Uh, and that was the impetus behind going to the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association and getting their help. Um, and that study is still available on our website if you want to see that. Um, and, and again, if you have questions about that, I'm, I'll be happy to, to answer those to the best of my ability. But um, So the fire department does a great job servicing Concord Township. Thank you. But you know who else does a great job, Connie? The Recreation Department. Yes, they do. <laughs> and they've yeah. got some great things coming up this spring. Yes, they do. They have uh, this 55 plus group is very active. Though I haven't been there, but they meet the th first and third. Well, Wednesday. when you get old enough, you can go then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you think I will? <laughs> They meet the first and third Wednesdays at 1.30 at the community center. And uh, they have a lot of fun. Bingo, high tea on Mother's Day, paint and punch, and uh, commemoration of the anniversary of D-Day. That will be exciting well, in will. June, absolutely. And then there are a lot of other spring events for the uh, Recreation Department. They're gonna have a garage sale at the community center on Friday, March 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. and on Saturday, March 1st, oh, March 16th. March 16th, I'm sorry, from 8 till noon with free admission and free refreshments. So come and see what they have for sale. Easter egg hunt <coughs> and the rescue pumper um, push-in ceremony that you've talked about. And then the summer concert <laughs> series begins June 20th. And uh, Concord Community Day is Saturday, August 10th. I think that'll be great because we'll have a parade and live music, kids' world, food trucks, craft beer, and wine tastings, and fireworks. So that'll be a really great day. Uh, I hope a lot of the new uh, residents will come for that because it's been a tradition for many, many years. It's been very, it's a nice event. Yes. Um, we also learned just recently uh, today that uh, Jason and Christian Avenue are going to be uh, resurfaced or, or rebuilt. 
Uh, that process is going to start April 15th. It should be a, a 91 day, mm -hmm. not 90 days, but a 91 day uh, process and that should be done prior to uh, Concord Community Days. So it should be done sometime the 1st of uh, August mm -hmm. and uh, so that that Far Hill subdivision should be free for uh, the parade um, that, to return there. Uh, the other road programs, uh, we will have the service department's going to be doing a lot of um, uh, full depth repair inside the Quail Hollow subdivision. The asphalt repair program, uh, we are still working on. It looks like we're going to do that in conjunction with Painesville Township this year. Uh, so we're excited to have a partner in that and, uh, and we will have more to come regarding the um, resurfacing of those asphalt roads uh, as those bids start to come in in the next couple weeks. And if you have any questions about any of these things, go to ConcordTWP.com and you'll see all the details. Well, I have a question about the push-in because uh, how does that quite work? This does not have an engine in it yet? Or, yeah, yeah, well, or it does have an engine. It seems fairly heavy for us <laughs> yeah. to be pushing this. So. Yeah, it'll actually be under power. We can't do it like they did um, a couple of hundred years ago when when the horses brought the, the fire pumper back, they would unhook the horses and then they would have to manually back the pumper in um, into the bay or into the barn as it was called back then. Um, <laughs> so it will be under power and, and the firefighters will be guiding it in. Um, but it's, it's just a neat ceremony to watch. It's actually, uh, we did one for the last um, ambulance we did. Um, this will be the first fire truck we've done a push in, but it's a fire department tradition across the country and across the world, so we're Good. happy to continue it. Mm -hmm. And I would um, add to what Connie said, um, always remember that you can uh, reach any of us um, trustees at trustees at concordtwp.com with an email. Um, also on our website at concordtwp.com, um, you can find all our contact information as well as our department heads like the fire chief, mm -hmm. Frank Kraska, our service director, um, and other folks that you might need to interact with if you have questions. Um, in addition, Andy Rose, our administrator. Um, all that information is available on our website. One last thing to point out, um, if you have a smartphone, and I know most of you do, um, there is now a Concord Township app and um, you can download that from uh, the Android store or uh, the uh, Apple store, the App Store, and um, on it contains uh, traffic information, contact information on various departments, community calendar, uh, Concord Township News. Um, this has been recently um, uh, released and we continue to update it like any app, adding, making it more and more robust and we will continue to do so um, as we move forward. But uh, it's an opportunity for you to be able to put Concord Township right in, right in the palm of your hand. Um, and we encourage you to go ahead and download uh, Concord's app and add it to your phone and part of your regular mix of your, uh, of your cell phone addictions. <laughs> So as we move out of the winter and enter spring, um, we want to just uh, you know stay with you. And, and if you have any questions, concerns, give us a call, mm -hmm. contact us, um, and please come out and see our fire stations. Come out and see us at our, our town hall meetings. Um, thank you. <laughs>